Shalom, Christopher Enoch here. Under the law, what does it mean to be under the law? You know, you've hear, you probably heard a lot of Christians say that you're not under the law. You probably read Paul's letter. Paul's letter is talking about being under the law, saying that you're not under the law. But what does that phrase mean, under the law? What does that mean if you're under the law? You know, a few years ago, I had a meeting. And I asked everybody at the meeting whether or not they were under the weather. And I, you know, I said, is anybody here under the weather? Let me see your hands. Is, is anybody under the weather today? And nobody put their hand up. You know, apparently nobody was there at the meeting that was under the weather. Now, most of you know what I mean when I say under the weather. You know, I mean whether or not someone is feeling sick or, you know, if you're sick or not. I mean, if you're sick, you're what they call under the weather. If you're not sick, if you feel, if you feel well, if you feel good, then you're not under the weather. But if you're not under the weather, does that mean you live on the International Space Station? Does that mean that you live in space? Because after all, you're not under the weather, right? Now, you know, to understand these certain phrases, to understand these, this kind of terminology, you got to look at the day, you got to look at the time, you got to look at the culture, you know, that the, a person is in. Now, when Paul wrote his letters, and he said, you're not under the law, okay, you got to look at the day, you got to look at the culture, you got to look at what it actually meant to be under the law back in those days. Now, here we are, here we are, we're in a different culture, a drastically different culture than what they had back then. We're in a different time, of course. We're in a different country, probably. Uh, and we're in a different, you know, millennium. <laughs> so uh, we're very far detached from these, from, from biblical times and from biblical characters. When Paul said under the law, if you were to look at that phrase in its context, in its full context. What I mean by full context is don't just pick a, ver a verse here and there from Paul's letters and, and try to make that nullify the rest of the Word of God or any parts of the other Bible. You don't do that. You take the whole thing. You take the whole entire scope of Scripture. Okay? You look at it all. So when Paul said under the law, it's kind of like how we say under the weather. When we say that someone is under the weather, we mean, we mean that they are experiencing the adverse effects of the weather. When we say that someone is not under the weather, we are not saying that they live in space, that they're not subject to the weather, or that this, the weather or does not rain on them, so to speak, or the sun doesn't shine on them, so to speak. It just means that you are not experiencing negative effects from the weather, okay? You're not sick, okay? So the same way when it comes to the phrase under the law. The, word, the, the phrase under the law is referring to experiencing negative effects from the law, especially, especially the effects of the punishment and the curses of the law, okay? So when you say you're under the law, you're saying that you are experiencing the curses of the law. You, you are being punished for breaking the law, okay? When you're not under the law, it doesn't mean that you don't have to obey the law. It doesn't mean that the law has no power over you. Just like if you're not under the weather right now, it doesn't mean that the weather has no power over you. Over you. you know, it doesn't mean that you cannot be, you know, rained upon. You cannot have the sun shine upon you. You cannot have a lightning bolt strike it doesn't mean that. It just means that you are not, at this present time, experiencing you know, negative effects of the weather. In the same way, if you are not under the law, it just means that you are not experiencing the punishments that are inflicted by the law, the curses of the law, okay? It just means that basically that you are obeying the law, okay? If you are driving a car, and you are really behaving yourself, you're, 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 you're following all the rules of the road, you're following all the laws, you're not under the law, you know, you're not under the law at all. You're, 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 you're free from the, from the punishment of the law because you are obeying the law. 
But if you have a car and you're going 150 miles an hour through, you know, uh, urban streets, okay, and you're smashing everybody you see and running through people and killing 50 people, I'm pretty sure it won't be very long before you are under the law, okay? You're going to be arrested and you're going to be under the law, okay? But if you're not arrested and you're not charged, then you're not under the law. So when Paul said in Christ, you are not under the law, he meant that when you are in Christ, you behave like Christ. When you're, you are in Jesus, when you are in Yeshua, when you are in Messiah, you behave like him, which means you obey the law. You know, I mean, hello, Yeshua obeyed the law. He obeyed the law. And if you are like him, if you are in him, that means you are obeying the law, okay? If you are following him, if you are taking his example, it means you are obeying the Torah. And when I say obeying the law in, this, in, the, in, the, in the context of Jesus, I'm talking about the law of God, of course. I'm talking about the Torah, not necessarily the law of the land. So if you are obeying the Torah, you are doing what Jesus did, what would Jesus do? He would obey the Torah. Therefore, you are not under the law. You are not experiencing negative effects of the Torah because you are obeying it. If, let's say, for example, you have an addiction to sin, you look to Jesus on the cross, you say, Jesus, when he died, when Yeshua died on the cross, like Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In other words, I am crucified with him. Like Paul said, uh, you who are in Christ, you have put to death your sinful desires, your sinful passions with Christ on the cross. When, when, when the lamb died, so did your sin and your passions and your lusts for sin and your habits for sin. And by faith, you can say, I am free because I looked to the Lamb of God. When the Lamb died, I identify with him. I die to sin at that point and I become free in Christ. I become free in Messiah. Now, a lot of people don't understand this. They say, oh, I, I go, I'm, I'm led by the Spirit. I'm not under the law. You know, I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm not under the Torah. I don't, uh, I don't have to go by the, the laws of, uh, the law of Moses, the law of Moshe, or the law of, you know, I'm not, I, I don't have to go by that. But what they don't understand, what they willingly blind themselves to, is that the law of Moses is the law of God which is the word of God, which came to Moses by the spirit of God, okay? God didn't come to him in, a, in, 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 you know, in the flesh. God came to him in the spirit and spoke his word to him. God is a spirit. Remember the scriptures? So God came to Moses. How did God come to Moses? Spiritually, obviously. By the spirit, by the spirit, the Holy Spirit. God came to Moses by the Holy Spirit and spoke his word, which is the law of God, which is what we call the law of Moses or the Torah. Okay, so when you listen to the Spirit, when you follow the Spirit, you are following Torah. The Spirit of God would not go against the Torah of God. The Spirit of God would not go against the law of God. Never. It is God's word. It is God's law. It is God's eternal law. It says very clearly many times throughout the scriptures. So if you are being led by the spirit, you are not under the law because you obey the law because the spirit speaks to you and leads you and guides you in the ways of the law. Okay. Some Christians don't, uh, some Christians say, oh, I don't have any law. I don't go by any law. I don't have, I don't, I'm not bound by any law. Really? Huh. Well, then you're completely lawless. I mean, I mean, that's just, I mean, you're, you're bound by laws more than you think you are. You're bound, you're, you're bound by the laws of physics. You're bound by laws of gravity. You're bound by certain laws in the universe that you don't even think about. That is God appointed laws, by the way. So you are, you are bound by laws. Yes, you are. And you should be bound by God's law. 
If you're not a slave of God's law, you are a slave of lawlessness. If you're not a slave of the law of God, you are a, you are a slave of sin. It says in the scripture, you're either a slave to righteousness or a slave to sin. You choose, okay? When you're a slave to righteousness, you're not under the law because you obey the law. When you're a slave to sin, you are under the law because you disobey the law, you break the law, and God being all-powerful, you know, God's on the throne, God is the ultimate judge, and he will ensure that the curses of the law come upon you or your, or your nation, okay, because it disobeys and violates his law. Okay, so you need to realize that if you are in Christ, if you do follow Christ, you do not break the Torah because Jesus didn't break the Torah. Some people say, oh, nobody can follow the law of God. Nobody can do all the commandments of God. Well, again, I mean, people don't understand. Yes, there are hundreds of laws in the Torah. But no, not all hundreds, not all of the hundreds of laws apply to everybody. There are laws for men. There are laws for women. There are law for, laws for priests. There are laws for the common people. There are laws for, you know, the Levites. There are laws for the other people. So I hope this video inspired you to think a little bit more about what the scriptures actually say and not just go by what comes from the pulpit all the time, you know, every Sunday. Because, by the way, most of it is just ear tickling and corrupted information. Anyway, you got to go by what the scriptures actually say. Thanks for watching.